Well, we are about to build a new stadium for the Buffalo Bills, and I say we because taxpayers are footing the bill for the majority of it. In exchange, there is a non relocation clause saying that the bills can't leave during the lease, even if there is a new owner one day. Of course, the devil is in the details, as they say, when it comes to the specific language and what potential outs exist, how much money you'd have to pay. Joining us live right now is J. Dale Shoemaker with Investigative Post. Just published an article a short time ago uh, on what is called a weak relocation clause for the new stadium deal. I know, J. Dale, that you looked at a lot of different um, NFL stadiums across the country, and I'll ask about that in a moment and kind of what you found when you were comparing them. But for people watching right now, and we covered this a lot, but there is some confusion surrounding it. What do we know about what the penalties would be and what is laid out in this lease agreement as it stands now? Sure. Um, so what we know at this point is the total cost for building the new build stadium is going to come in around $1.4 billion. Now, taxpayers are footing the bill for $850 million of that. And then there's another approximately uh, $400 million that is going to be contributed from the county and the state for upkeep, maintenance, and things like that. So what the uh, what we know about the lease agreement right now is that it's going to run for 30 years and at year 15 uh, the penalties for the bills breaking the lease start to decline. Uh, now that is significant because other teams in other cities they have to stick around longer before the penalties uh, for leaving and breaking the lease start to go down. Yeah, so you looked at the costs and, and then the you know, specific contracts and leases um, for other stadiums that were used, uh, that were built rather using public assistance since 2014. Um, and again, the article is, is titled Weak Relocation Clause in Bill's Lease. Um, why the weak term? What did you find as you kind of compared this to what other teams are doing? Sure, I'll give you uh, some examples just as, as comparison. Um, so the San Francisco 49ers, they recently got a new stadium, uh, Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. Um, that's a similar level of public investment, $850 million to build the stadium, but they are locked in uh, highest penalties if they break the lease for 25 years compared to the Bills 15. Mm. Then you have other stadiums such as US Bank Stadium in Minneapolis where the Vikings play. That was a public investment around $500 million, um, and the Vikings are locked in for all 30 years of their lease, uh, with penalties uh, being you have to basically pay the public back for what they put into the stadium. J. Dale, I know that you talked to an economics professor um, who kind of follows all of this, and that's where you got the word weak, right, a as he studied this. Um, but how do you anticipate this moving forward? I mean, I, I think all the reporting out there suggests that this is pretty much a done deal, right? Or, or do you think there's any negotiating left to be done? And I know that you also got to question, you know, the people who are, are kind of running all this. Sure. Uh, so the state and the county, they say that the process is almost done. They're dotting I's, they're crossing T's, they're putting the last final touches onto the agreement. And the state argues that they have a very strong deal with the bills, that the bills will be here for the full 30 term, 30 year term of their lease. Um, now the word weak here is coming from the fact that the penalties start to go down after year 15, meaning that after year 15, which is not that long of a time compared to other NFL teams, uh, the Bills hypothetically could either move, uh, break the lease and move, get sold, uh, and that new owner could take them somewhere else, uh, and the penalties would not be as big uh, as they were, you know, year zero to year 15. And when you questioned about this, uh, you were told by the attorney for Empire State Development, right, that the state, if they did do it, the state could then go in and sue and try to keep them from moving, even if they tried to pay the money. Um, I don't know. There's a lot to it. I mean, we're about to, to spend a ton of money in taxpayer dollars, uh, and, and obviously there's a lot of, there are a lot of specifics that need to be worked out. Uh, J. Dale Shoemaker is a reporter with our nonprofit partners at Investigative Post. Investigativepost.org uh, is the website with the article. J. Dale, thank you very much. Thanks, Michael.